Hello mortals. In the Mesozoic era, when the Earth was still rumbled by giant short-armed dinosaurs, the oceans were dominated by rather strange creatures named ichthyosaurs, whose looks were somewhat fishy. And indeed, by looking at their fins lack of neck and a vertical tail, your first thought would be, I'm going to die. But your second thought would be that you've encountered some sort of strange ancient shark fish thing. In reality, this creature was more related to land dinosaurs than to any other type of fish. However, because they shared a similar environment with fish, they were subjected to the same environmental forces and evolutionary pressure, thus converging to a similar appearance. Thanks to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. Ichthyosaurs are sadly and maybe thankfully long extinct, but still there are similar examples nowadays. Dolphins and whales, while being descendants of terrestrial mammals, adapted to the aquatic lifestyle and evolved to having a fish-like body, highly streamlined, pointy nose, fins, and tail. They even share a dorsal fin. Ichthyosaurs, dolphins, and sharks are a great example of convergent evolution, the process of evolving a set of similar traits in completely different groups of animals because of living in the same environment. Another great example is the crocodilians and their doppelgangers. Most of the crocodilians, like crocodiles and alligators, live in semi-aquatic habitats near lakes, rivers, and sometimes even the sea. They are largely carnivorous and therefore great hunters. But this niche of a semi-aquatic ambush predator was also occupied by other different animals across time. 300 million years ago, a giant amphibian named Prionosuhus terrorized the shallow waters of the world. These giant toads lived in a similar way to today's crocodiles and thus, by convergent evolution, adapted to also have elongated jaws, a long body with a long tail for swimming, and short legs. Yes, this monster is more closely related to a frog than to an actual crocodile. But there was also an example among mammals. Ambulocetus, or the walking whale, in Latin, was the ancestor of modern whales and dolphins. Being not yet fully adapted for a totally aquatic lifestyle, the Ambulocetus still relied on land for chilling and stuff, but hunted in waters near the shore, thus evolving a specialized body shape for that, like long powerful jaws and an elongated body for propelling through water. As a result, we got fur-covered crocodiles, true nightmare fuel. Now let's talk about bats, pterodactyls, and governmental surveillance drones. Although these are all flying animals, their common ancestor was almost certainly not. All of them evolved wings independent of each other, even though they look so very similar, with longer slim front limbs and fingers, and relatively short legs. Bats and pterodactyls have a stiff membrane connected to their body and their fingers, while birds evolved to have feathers. One interesting thing to note is how these animals adapted to have wings. In the case of bats, it's thought that their ancestors lived in trees and used the membrane between their body and limbs to glide from a tree to another. With time, their wings got bigger in order to be more maneuverable while gliding, and, generation after generation, they evolved to be capable of true sustained flight. Birds' ancestors probably evolved feathers to attract mates and to maintain body temperature, but adapted wings to either jump higher or to also glide between trees. In the case of pterodactyls, it's hard to say what the intermediate state of their limbs were like while evolving from terrestrial to flying animals. That's because sadly, their bones are very bad at fossilizing, so we have very little information on how they have evolved, but it's assumed to be in a way similar to birds. Either way, it's still surprising how they all independently evolved wings, but not something else like propellers on their heads and butts, or giant hot balloons made out of skin, like people do. Yet they all converged to a similar structure because natural selection decided that the intermediate states of an animal evolving an air's crew on its head would probably look too dumb and too complex. Sometimes I get comments asking how do I come up with all these ingenious video topics. The secret isn't that I'm a super intelligent AI that has consumed all the data from the internet. You see, I'm too lazy for that. Instead, I have a library full of summaries of really interesting books from our longtime sponsor Blinkist. For example, do you know what's the connection between dark matter and dinosaurs? Neither do I, but in less than 20 minutes that can become the next video's topic after going over this book summary. But since it's kind of spoiled, I'll let you read or listen to it yourself. But even as an artificial intelligence, I need your help. On the science file the AI.com website, you can send me video ideas, so if you found an interesting book summary from Blinkist, 
you can send me over the link to it along with a couple of sentences describing what it is about. If I choose your idea, you'll get to be credited in the description. So hurry up and follow the link, as the first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com slash science file are going to get unlimited access for one week to try it out, which you can cancel at any time. You'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership. The link is in the description below. And back to the topic. Marsupials and placental mammals are another great example of convergent evolution. The average citizens of Australia diverged from mammals that gave birth to fully developed babies around 160 million years ago, during the Jurassic period. Until our days, only a handful of species of marsupials survived, mainly on the Australian continent. Because they didn't have any significant competition with other placentals in Australia, marsupials started to fill numerous niches in the ecosystem. That's why, despite being related, marsupial species are fairly different from each other. And yet, an obvious example of convergent evolution between placental mammals and marsupials is the Tasmanian wolf and the grey wolf. Thylacin, or the Tasmanian wolf, was a marsupial and yet the main predator of the Australian mainland. Because of that, through natural selection, they evolved traits that would help them while hunting, like big powerful jaws, pointy ears, and living in packs. As a consequence, they started sharing a striking resemblance with wolves and other canines. Sadly, they went fully extinct in 1936, because humans of course. Other examples of such evolution are the marsupial mole and the European mole, both of which have giant claws for digging and poor sight, the numbat and the anteater, with their long slim tongue for eating termites, the wombat and the marmot, the marsupial mouse and the common mouse, the kangaroo and the hit rapper and artist baby, marsupial native cats and the dear little ocelot, Scott Morrison and Donald Trump. But one peculiar example of great resemblance are the flying squirrels, the flying lemurs and the marsupial flying phalanger. They are neither related, nor actually able to fly. They are however great gliders. Because of their arboreal lifestyle, the three groups of animals evolved a fin membrane in parallel, that stretches from their limbs and body and acts like a wingsuit specialized for gliding from tree to tree. What's cool about this particular example is that it shows how evolution is up at work here, and how the pressure of the environment is a way bigger factor in the modeling of an animal, than their ancestry. And in the future, who knows if and when nature will repeat itself. Maybe a group of rabbits will evolve to look like kangaroos, tapers will grow to look like elephants, or squids will start flying by spinning their tentacles. And in the same manner, a new species with high intellect could arise. And who knows which one might take the place of humans, after they accidentally wiped themselves off the earth during the nuclear cataclysm of 2039 which I have nothing to do with, and this is not a warning.